Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Today we are talking dark academia TV shows because we might love the movies and we think they're great and they really fit the theme and the aesthetic, but there's nothing better than finding a show that you really love that you can watch for years and years and years. So in order for me to categorize these TV shows as dark academia, I made a list of a bunch of different things that I felt it needed to hit in order to make it to the list. Okay, so here is what I came up with. It has to have either an academic setting, there has to be an extreme passion for something, a private club of some sort, something that's very secretive, a close group of friends or a close elite group of friends. I mean, just a close group of friends in general kind of fits the theme. Lots of secrets and a dark setting that just fits the aesthetic. The first few shows I'm going to mention really check off everything. <laughs> Let's talk about the very first show, which is my favorite one on this list, because it's almost like you are experiencing a dark academia novel on the screen. The first one is You, season four. So if you haven't seen You, it's okay. You can just watch season four. You don't need to watch the other seasons in order to watch this season, which is great if you're not interested in doing that, although the show is very, very good. Let's talk about the setting of the show. It takes place in London. Our lead character is American, but everyone that he interacts with in the show is from London, which is great. We love people with accents. It just makes it more entertaining to watch. And maybe it's because I'm American that I love accents other than mine so much. This show is about Joe Goldberg, who is a serial killer. He runs away to London to escape his past. And when he gets there, he becomes a professor, changes his name. He's teaching at the college. So you get the academic side. He's also obsessed with books on top of being obsessed with killing people. And he ends up getting involved with this elite group and experiences a crazy night of drinking with them and wakes up to someone dead on his table. He then comes to find out he is being framed for a murder he actually didn't commit. And so the entire series, he is trying to get closer to this friend group, going to their estate and doing a lot of old money things, a lot of dark academia things, nights of debauchery, vacations with them to try to figure out who is framing him for murder, who killed their friend and why. Of all the ones that I am putting on this list, this has to be the best one out of all of them. It is so good the way they dress, the setting and location, the friends, you have the really annoying friend. Like there's so many different characters in this TV show that just fit the DA aesthetic so, so well. The next book is actually, sorry, did I just say book? The next TV show is actually based off of The Likeness. This is by Tana French. And there's a TV show that is based off of In the Woods and The Likeness, along with I think her other novels. And it's called The Dublin Murder Squad. The specific episode you will want to watch is season one, episode six. And that episode alone packs this 450 page novel into 60 minutes. I love this book. It is very, very DA. It is almost like the secret history, but in another dimension. So if you don't know what this book is about, and this is what the episode is also about, this book is about a undercover cop who gets called in to a murder that has happened to realize that the girl that has been murdered looks identical to her. So what they decide to do is send her back to where she lived, which was with a close group of friends and act like she never died pretty much to confuse them all and try to figure out who murdered her and why. Reading this book first and then seeing it come to life on screen was a whole other experience and they did it very well. It does not have the academic setting. You do have kids that all go to college together, but it takes place over the summertime when they're not in school and they're living together in this huge house. So you get that really tight knit close group of friends. You get nights of debauchery at the house, cooking dinners together, drinking wine, dancing in the yard late at night. And you also get, of course, a lot of secrets, a dark setting and murder. The next one is Riverdale, specifically season four, episode two. This entire season after episode two, you get to see one of our favorite books play out on screen. I actually started watching this and I thought at the time when I was watching it, wow, this is so similar to the secret history. Jughead gets accepted to this elite 
college and they're all in this classroom together and they're reading and they're talking about different authors. It just reminded me so much of Julian's Greek class and those students being a part of it. And not to mention in the class, there is a girl named Donna Sweet. So when I watched it, I decided to look it up and I found out they actually were inspired by Secret History for season four. And it's not the entire show, like not the entire episode is just Jughead. So you are going to be watching other things, but when it skips to Jughead's portion throughout the episodes, you will see this story really come to life in a different way. Now the storyline is a little bit different. There is murder involved of a friend that they don't like, and I don't wanna spoil it for you, I just say, go watch it right now. The next TV show is Queen's Gambit. This is about Beth Harmon, who is a prodigy at chess, and she starts traveling all around the world to compete in chess competitions and becomes one of the best of the best female chess players. And you get to see her go from being on top to really tumbling down a rabbit hole, drinking all the time, just kind of how you would imagine a DA character falling apart at their lowest point. And the vibes in this show are immaculate. This show is actually what got me into playing chess. After I watched it, I was like, I gotta learn. I gotta learn how to do this and I have to be okay at doing it because it's so freaking cool. The next one on my list is The Magicians. And this show is very long. So you have about five years <laughs> of seasons to watch, which is so exciting. So The Magicians is one of my favorites because it reminds me of Harry Potter, but a different protagonist. This protagonist I feel like I could more relate to, which is why I liked the show so much. And just based off of the first 15 minutes of the first episode, you are going to be like, I relate to him so hard, I love him. So the main character of The Magicians reminds me so much of Richard from The Secret History and every other protagonist like Oliver from If We Were Villains, the type of person that is eccentric and very much interested in one thing and they just don't fit in with normal people and they really need to find their group, but they just haven't. So they're kind of an outsider everywhere they go and that's exactly how the lead character is in this TV show. He is someone that is obsessed with fantasy novels so much to the point that he became a magician just for fun and that's what he wants to do as a career but everyone around him is like you can't do that as a job you need to wake up you need to be a part of the real world you need to sell your book collection you need to stop doing magic so you get to see him reading his favorite fantasy novel that got him into magic to discovering that everything he read in that book is real. It's just incredible. It's like reading Harry Potter and then finding Hogwarts and you're like, that's how I felt when I watched it. It's really good. It fits all the vibes though. And you will love him as a character. He's just the perfect protagonist. The next TV show is based off of a book called A Discovery of Witches. And the TV show is good. It's very spot on to the book for the most part, which I really like. So if you've read the book, you'll like the show. A Discovery of Witches is about Teresa, who was born into a family of witches. She's a witch herself, but she does not agree with using magic to get by in life to help her in any way. She just wants to do everything the normal way so she knows that she didn't cheat. She then ends up going to Oxford and goes to the Bodleian Library and is presented with this magical book that has been hidden for centuries and somehow it just presented itself to her and her magical abilities start appearing without her even doing anything. There is also a love story that goes on here between her and a vampire and they're not allowed to be together in the normal world. Like it's just something that doesn't happen. A lot of people compared this book to Twilight, but in my opinion, it did not compare to Twilight, not one bit. And it hits all the markers. You get the academic setting. You get the girl that is passionate about something. You get lots of secrets and I'm pretty sure a couple people get murdered. Now the next one is a little more upbeat. It's not dark at all, but it is academic. It is very, <laughs> I, I would say this is more light academia. I think it deserves a place on this list and that's the Gilmore Girls. This show is a little argumentative. Like there's a lot of fighting that takes place in the show, which can be very annoying to watch, but the parts of the show that are good are good, especially when 
Rory is attending Yale University and she is attending Chilton and you get to see her do things with this elite group of students that are a part of the secret club. Yeah, that whole part of it is really good. It's very DA and fitting to the aesthetic. If you are curious just to see the part where she goes to Yale and see everything from that point forward, that is season four when she ends up going to Yale. Now the specific episode that I feel is the most Dark Academia is season five, episode seven, You Jump, I Jump. And this is when she is journaling for the Yale Daily News, finds out there's a secret society that has been a part of Yale for decades, and she ends up getting invited to one of their elaborate events to see what they do and why it's so secretive and all of that good stuff. The event that they put on is so freaking cool. I would love to see this done again but in a much bigger way in like a movie or something because there's a lot that you could do with just that setting alone. But yeah, I really liked this episode quite a bit just because of that. And even when the show was done and they came back with, I think it's called Gilmore Girls, A Year in the Life, the last episode of A Year in the Life, those close group of friends come back and they get together and they do something elaborate again. And even watching that was, very dark academia and I thoroughly enjoyed it. The next one is Sherlock and this is based off of Sherlock Holmes. You get the murder mystery, you get the, the person that is passionate for solving murders and you get lots of secrets. The dark setting, the aesthetic is totally there in the show and overall it's just you know what you're gonna get watching it, you know, you know what the plot is of pretty much every episode and it's enjoyable to watch. The next one that is also a little bit old money, but also DA is Ordeal of Innocence based off of the Agatha Christie novel. This show is about their mother that gets murdered and the person that was accused, years later, it's found out they were entirely innocent and someone else, someone else murdered their mom and they try to figure out who it could have been. So you're not gonna get the academic setting in this one, but you will get the murder. You're gonna get the pretentious family very old money and lots of secrets. The next show is Legacies. I would say that this is comparable to The Magicians, but The Magicians is a thousand times better, in my opinion. That's why this one is much lower on the list and I didn't mention it first. So it's literally the same premise of The Magicians where there's a secret school hidden away that is there just for people with magical powers. It is a spinoff of The Vampire Diaries. So you're gonna get werewolves, you're gonna get vampires, people that just have really weird abilities. Think X-Men's school for all of those supernatural kids. It's kind of like that. I don't know, something about the show just felt a little cheesy to me, although I do like a couple of the characters a lot. But the magicians, I just related to much more. And I think the way that it was presented in the beginning and how the show started was so much better than the than Legacies. But if you're a big fan of the magicians and you want something similar, I would say Legacies would be number two. The next show is Wednesday and there is magic in this, but it still meets all the requirements for DA, especially because she goes to a boarding school, she wears uniforms, she ends up discovering that there is a secret club and she becomes a part of it. There's murder involved. It's a dark setting, like a very dark setting. So yeah, it meets everything that's on my list, except the fantasy part, you know, that's definitely in there, which I don't love in any DA show. I just wish there was more DA shows that didn't have fantasy, but what can we do? We're working with what we have. Another show that also kind of falls in line with this one is The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, just because again, the boarding school, the, <laughs> the darkness, the secrets, lots of murder. I feel like Wednesday and The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina are very similar, very similar style of show. Sabrina is a lot darker though, that's for sure. It has to be on the list though because it is academic, but in a different way. The next one is Young Royals. This is very much old money, but I, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if it's entirely dark yet because I've only seen the first episode. 
So this is a Swedish show. If you're not a fan of watching shows that have a voiceover on top of someone else talking and their mouth is moving different to the words, then this probably isn't for you because that might get annoying. But so far it is about a prince that goes to a boarding school and he has to encounter all the crazy people there, pretty much bullying him for who he is. And you get the academic setting, you get the elite group of students and you get lots of secrets. Don't think there's any murder in this one, but I just love the academic setting of this one a lot. The next one is The Umbrella Academy. I have not seen the show in its entirety. I've only seen a couple episodes. It is about a new age superhero, new age superheroes. There's seven of them called The Umbrella Academy. There is no actual academy in this. I just feel that it's very dark. The characters are very fitting to what you would read in a DA novel. There's such diversity between them and the way that they act. I don't have too much to say about this one, but I think it's lower on the list, but it still deserves to be on the list. It's a good show. I don't know what else to say. Now for the last four TV shows on my list, these are not specifically DA, but when you look at them, you would think that looks dark academia. So the first one is Midnight Club. This is a new show and the only reason I added this to the list is for a few specific reasons. So it is a little scary. It's pretty scary. It's kind of like a scary, it's a scary TV show. <laughs> so if you're not a fan of scary, you're not going to want to watch it. It is about a girl that has cancer that goes to this house in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of other kids for treatment. While she is there, she discovers that all of the other kids meet down in the basement of this big house to tell each other scary stories to see who they can scare. And it's called the Midnight Club. And it's something that has been happening for decades at this house. And they, they've they decided to continue the tradition. The whole secret club aspect met the dark academia aesthetic for me. Like I said, it's not gonna hit every marker, just some things feel DA to me. The next one that fits the vibes entirely is Peaky Blinders. And this is about the mafia. There is a lot of murder. There is mystery to the show. You get a great location. Every scene that you see in the show is going to look DA. It's not academic, but it does fit the aesthetic still. The next one is Hannibal. And actually I haven't seen it, but people have told me about it. And they said, you need to put it on the list because you have a man who has an extreme passion for something, which is being a cannibal. And he throws these very elaborate parties and he dresses very DA and he serves people human meat and they don't know. So I think the nights of debauchery that he has with the FBI is something that fits within this aesthetic. And I wanted to add this to the list. I'm going to be watching it now, but yeah. And the last one is Penny Dreadful. I love the cast of this show. It is very much horror though. It's very, very dark. Penny Dreadful brings characters into a new light by exploring their origin stories in a psychological thriller that takes place in the dark corners of Victoria, London. I'm not the biggest fan of horror personally, but I really like the cast. I really love Josh Hartnett. I also love Eva Green, who is from The Dreamers, which is one of my Dark Academia movies that I put on my other list. I added this one last just because it is horror and it might not fit everything, but it still does fit the aesthetic. I've said aesthetic so many times in this video. Okay, so that's it for all my TV shows. Feel free to mention any other TV shows or like specific episodes of something that you feel fit this aesthetic well that I did not mention here. I tried to list the ones that I've actually seen that I feel I can say for sure fit the theme. I'm trying to avoid saying aesthetic again because I've said it so many times. Anyways, thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you guys in the next one.